Hello YouTube, James Baker here and today I have a great video. I'm going to teach you exactly what IRS and government compliance you need to file for all types of entities and I have a presentation for you so that it's very clear and you can pause it and rewind it and go back to it and have everything listed by due dates by form type and I'm going to explain everything as I go through it and I'm going to keep the video short so it's going to have all the information you need it's going to be correct whether you're American or you're a foreign person and I'm going to explain when they're due what forms to do when to pay taxes when not to pay taxes and when to seek professional advice because not every situation is the same there's a lot of bad information on YouTube there's a lot of incorrect information and I think this is going to be a great presentation starting point for what forms you need to file in 2024 so let me get to this presentation and share my screen okay so here we have a little presentation I put together understanding the 2024 compliance for your US company or yourself I'm going through a lot of examples here there's different types of companies we have single member LLC multi member LLC S corporations C corporations I don't have it listed here but I go over foreign corporations and I'm going to address individuals like persons who are doing work or not doing work in the US this is going to cover most things the different agencies and forms we have to file we're going to talk about income taxes which goes to the Internal Revenue Service we're going to talk about FinCEN which is the anti-money laundering people and they're making sure that we're not breaking any laws and it's mostly informational they don't charge any taxes and that's the new BOI report that everyone's talking about we're going to talk about sales taxes very briefly these are generally state taxes so there's 50 states in the United States and the sales taxes are basically like a VAT or a tax based on product shipped into those states and then we have payroll taxes which to most people on my channel don't apply but for some people it applies and I'll go over that so we're gonna start with the single member LLC an LLC with only one owner doesn't pay tax but here's the forms that need to be required uh, filed so a foreign owned single member LLC files this 5472 a pro forma 1120 with a 5472 attached to it now I have a course explaining how to do this where we actually review the forms for you obviously we can do all of these tax forms as well at, at the company but um you know this is what you have to file they're due on april 15th of 2024 and it's generally all of these forms every one of them is running on a calendar tax year so january 1st 2023 to december 31st 2023 and that's what we're filing all of these now the u.s resident owned single member llc so if i as a u.s resident citizen resident have an llc i don't have to file an 11 20 54 72 i have to file a schedule c on my 1040 on my personal tax return and pay tax on my income because i live in the u.s and i'm an american I pay tax if you're foreign if you're from Norway and you have this LLC then if you don't have a US trader business you don't have to pay tax on the income but you do have to file this disclosure this 11 20 54 72 additionally if you're a foreign person in this example if you're a, a Norwegian person then you file a W8 BEN to people in the US who are paying you when they ask for a W9 or a W8 BEN you give them a W8 BEN if your LLC is owned by a foreign corporation like a Dubai company that's when you would provide a W-A-B-E-N-E. -E. And I have videos on how to do those forms. The FinCEN BOI report needs to be filed by everyone. And that's due by, um, if your company was open before 2023, before the end of 2023, then you have until the end of 2024 to file that. And then I'm gonna have a separate video coming up where I do that form live with you. I haven't gotten around to it yet, it's January 2nd. Sales taxes generally only apply on products, but if you are shipping products into the US and you're not using Amazon, or you're not using a company that collects and pays a sales tax on your behalf, basically if you're using drop shipping your own website, you are required to collect those sales taxes. And that's something that you have to uh, register in all the states, collect the sales taxes and pay it to the states cost of doing business it's uh it's generally a tax to your clients not to you and then payroll taxes generally don't apply to a single member llc now let's add one owner to that llc and we have a multi-member llc a multi-member llc all of them file form 1065 which is a partnership return and schedules k1 the forms are due on march 15th 2024 and they're best to be filed electronically if there's foreign owners and you have a uf trader u.s trader business you see the effectively connected income with a u.s trader business i think that that's wrong i think it should be eci not efcti whatever it's a long acronym if you have a u.s business let's say if you have a if you're a foreign if there's multiple owners of an llc and you operate a shoe store in the u.s and you're selling shoes at a store in the u.s then you have to comply with the series 8804 and that's withholding of taxes on the portion of earnings by the attributed to the foreign partners that doesn't apply to many people but it could apply to you u.s residents will include the k1 which is the por your portion of the earnings. So if there's two partners, the 1065 has 100,000 of income, each partner gets a K-1 saying that their portion of the income is 50,000. And that goes with the 1065. 
So U.S. residents include their K-1 on their Form 1040 Schedule E. This company, a multi-member LLC, sends a W-9 to U.S. payors. So if you're getting, if you, if a company is asking you for a W-9, you can give them a W-9 as a multi-member LLC. You still have to do the BOI report. Sales taxes apply the same way. If you, if you're selling products into the states, you have to look at those rules. And payroll taxes generally don't apply. If you have employees in the U.S., then yes, you have to deal with payroll taxes. But generally, most of my clients and people on this channel have contractors and they don't have employees. So only if you're legally able to work in the U.S. would you be an employee. Next, we're jumping into S corporations. Now, this could be an LLC or a corporation like James Baker Corporation. Either of those entities can elect to be taxed as an S corp via form 2553. Now, an S corp can only be owned by Americans. There can be no foreign owners and there can be no foreign companies owning an S corp because the real benefit of the S corp is you save on payroll taxes. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because I have a, a big international audience but for my american clients if you're making like 300 grand a year and you're an american you probably will benefit from using an s corporation depending on where you live via the payroll taxes and that gets me down to the bottom where payroll taxes are generally required s corporation owners are required to pay themselves a reasonable compensation so that's not the focus of this video but i want this to be an awareness video where if you have an s corp or let's say if you're an American and you have an LLC and you make over $100,000 a year, it probably makes sense to use an S-Corp, pay a, a salary to yourself on these 941 and 940 forms, and then you'll save money that way. Schedule a call and we can go over it. These forms are due March 15th. You can have foreign owners. It's the same as a multi-member LLC where the S-Corp doesn't pay taxes. So the single-member LLC, the multi-member LLC, and the S-Corp don't really pay taxes. The multi-member LLC could withhold taxes on behalf of the partners, but it's not really paying a tax. It's withholding a tax for the partner. The BOI reports still apply. Sales taxes apply the exact same way and payroll taxes are generally required. Now we're moving to the C corporation. This can be an LLC or a corp by default is taxed as a C corporation. An LLC can make an election via form 8832 to pay taxes as a C corp. A C corporation files form 1120 by April 15th and is subject to a 21% federal income tax. There are also state taxes, which may apply depending on where you're registered and where you're doing business. Dividends from the C-Corp out of profit. So if the C-Corp makes $100,000 in profit, you pay $21,000 in taxes, then you have $79,000 of money in there. If you take that out, that's subject to income tax. If you're an American, ideally you're gonna pay a long-term capital gains tax on that, uh, max 23%. If you're a foreign person, the corporation in the U.S. needs to withhold taxes ideally at the treaty rate or at a max of 30%. So if you're a foreign person and you're using a corp, it's ideally because you have either real estate in the U.S. or because you have a physical business in the U.S. that's subject to U.S. taxation. There's, there's generally more complicated and it's generally there's more to do. The BOI report applies. Sales taxes apply the same way. And payroll taxes are required generally if you have employees in the U.S., of course, or if the owners are in the U.S. For example, if I have a corporation and I run my business through it and I'm working for it, I need to pay myself a salary because I'm working for the company. I can't take only dividends. I need to pay myself an actual salary and it needs to be reasonable. Uh, it's Again, for my audience, this generally doesn't apply, but I wanted to share it with you. Foreign corporations. A foreign corporation, which is doing business in the U.S., would file a protective form 1120F, also due April 15th, and that's best filed electronically. I say all of these are best filed electronically because you get a record, it goes through clean, and the, most softwares won't let you do them wrong, like materially wrong, because it won't transmit or it won't get accepted. These are generally more complicated. However, if you're using a, a foreign corp and you're selling into states doing e-commerce and all this stuff, I would recommend a protective form 1120F. And that's basically a blank form. But if you don't file that and the IRS audits you later and determines you are liable for taxes, then you cannot claim your expenses in the future. So a protective form is really, really important. There's many different examples of companies really getting screwed by not filing protective forms. I mean, if you have a foreign corp, and you're selling products into the US, you're doing something that maybe could be construed as having a presence in the US, then I would consider and have strongly recommend filing protective return. It's not that hard to do and you should definitely do it. Generally, sales tax are the same. There's no BOI, there's no FinCEN report unless you're registered in these states and payroll taxes generally won't apply either. They shouldn't apply. You shouldn't be having a foreign corporation with US employees. Now I'll talk about individuals. Um, this is like me, you. 
Jim, Fred. Income taxes, an, a foreign person's filing a 1040NR. That's generally due on June 15th. I didn't write that on here. An American, a U.S. person or U.S. resident files a 1040 and that's due on April 15th. Again, you can request an extension. Foreign people, W-A-B-E-N, Americans, W-9. Generally, no BOI report. There's no entity. Generally, sales taxes would apply the same way. It's easier to do it with an entity to register in the States and pay the sales taxes with an entity. And the payroll taxes are generally not going to apply. You're not going to file it that way. I've never seen it done that way. So here's my little summary, a little recap. I'm keeping this in under 15, under 10, 12 minutes. Everything you need to know. Starting 1124, all entities need to do the FinCEN disclosure and the BOSS system on the FinCEN website, which I guess is out now. I pulled this from my other presentation. Sales taxes generally apply on products shipped into the United States or on services that are delivered in the US. It's different in every state. So first of all, there's 50 different states, there's 50 different sets of rules. In Texas, if I am a dentist and I'm installing crowns in people's teeth, then I probably have to pay sales tax and charge sales tax on it. The thing, the thing is, is that you have to check in every instance and in every situation for your business. The easiest one is selling products, but if you are delivering service in the States, you definitely need to check on this. Income tax filings can be extended. Foreign disclosures, if you're a foreign person with a C Corp or you know you own any of any US companies, the foreign disclosures are really important and carry large penalties. There's, depending on what you're doing, there's different disclosures. And you can look up the instructions of all the forms. For example, one thing I didn't mention for a C Corp, if it's foreign owned, it has to comply with the 5472 rules as well. So if you have a foreign, if a, if a Fred from Norway owns a US C Corp and he's sending money between his Norwegian and US company, he has to disclose that on form 5472 and there's big penalties. Uh, if any of you guys have a, a US company that owns foreign companies, then that needs to be disclosed as well. And there's big penalties for not doing those disclosures. Anything, any foreign entities that US company owns or US person owns have to be disclosed as well as um, any types of those transactions that apply. So if you have questions about this, let me know. I mean, comment below. I'm happy to help. Watch this video back. This is literally going over everything that needs to be filed for every type of entity. I have more videos coming out. Check this video above to learn more about the Corporate Transparency Act. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Appreciate you being here. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.